climbing rope and I'm gonna head up about halfway up this snarly looking fur here and I may as well just explain the reason why we're taking this these trees down is we get these weird uh, weather patterns that happen once in a while and it's always kind of around this time where the, the wind comes down from the mountains and that's when we get the most blowdown uh, around the woods here because the roots aren't rooted to protect from that amount of wind that blows down that way. So this tree can hit that house and that's not good. So we're gonna pull it down. We're gonna fall, fell it over this way. I'm gonna get it between the tank and the tank. That's the goal. The goal is ultimately not to hit the house because this thing's leaning towards the house, but I'm going to climb up this tree and tie it off. Katie's going to pull a little tension in the truck. I'm going to get my chainsaw and we're going to bring this sucker down. And once that tree is down, we're going to be getting some good chips out of it because it is getting mucky and muddy around here. And I want some chips to cover that up. What I cheated is the toolbox. Oh. <laughs> Gonna lie, I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> we still have a house. You got a cigarette? <laughs> Oh man, that's stressful. Did the rope do anything? <laughs> uh, it's just a backup safety, just in case it went awry. That's what it was for. It wasn't meant to have any real tension in it. Yeah. Whew.
Almost like you're tired out, Boo Boo. Alright, now that we've got that firewood all cleaned up, we're going to start chipping, which is my favorite thing to do. We are going to need a ton more chips. I think our uh, plan is to take all of the mill offcuts and cut them down to size and start chipping those because that's going to be a ton of wood, good quality wood chips. And we just have so many offcuts that we can't seem to get through in other ways. So look at this. Pretty much time. Might have, I don't know, maybe I'll fight these get quite a few of them. Still quite a bit of snow in there. It's a really long dog. Sits up high.
right up to the house, so I gotta pull it off in the spring. It really doesn't seem like for all that chipping, we actually got very much covered, but I think it'll help a little bit with the mud, at least for the entryway into the yard through the gate there. Greg did fill in some of the area where we were working on our water line in the beginning of the winter, I guess. Um, and a lot of that soil is kind of settling and so it, we just need to fill it in a bit more. So he did a bit of that. It's starting to rain a fair bit. It's cold, just pretty gray. I think we're gonna take the rest of the afternoon off and just cozy up inside. Is it the happy dog? Is that the happy dog? She's so happy though. Look how happy she is. She's just so happy. She's just a happy girl. Oh, fun police coming in. Leave the old girl alone. He said, leave the old girl alone, Juniper. You're just too crazy for the old dog. She's just a happy girl because she lives in the woods. Yes. All right, we've got some warm-ish weather for the next few days we thought it'd be the perfect time to start tiling around the wood stove so we got to get this wood stove out of here and moved over we've got some extra chimney and we're going to kind of snake our way over with the chimney so that we can still use the wood stove uh, a little bit but yeah we've got to get this thing out of the way so we can start tiling let's grab it should be light it's only 420 pounds or something like that Now what? Well, it comes out here and then we, then we shift it a little bit. I'm going to get a little bit closer. Try and it. This is... No, I don't think so. Let's try. You can, but I can. That's good. Okay, we'll keep going. Oh, no, not good. Okay. Okay, that's kind of good. I'm gonna pull it this way. I'm gonna tilt it on this side. <laughs> no. Okay, so that's how you're supposed to install the chimney if you want to do it correctly. You need to make sure that you have a down angle towards your actual chimney going up. Uh, you want as much long area for creosote to sit low so that it lights on fire and cleans itself out. So uh, thanks for watching our tutorial on how to install the chimney absolutely perfectly and uh, we'll see you next time. I'm cutting the black line. Exactly, Katie. All right. All right, yep. I got you my don't do back. it perfect, you're fired. Oh, I know. Here comes Boo Boo to help. Put my leg on you. Hi. Right stuff, Katie. We've been getting a lot of questions about this orange membrane and why we're using it. And that is because we have OSB subfloors and this adds 
rigidity to the floor so that the tiles are um, properly supported. And then the other thing is that we want to line our tiles up to be the same height as the engineered hardwood floor. We had to calculate the thickness of the tile and how much space we needed to fill underneath of that to have it line up. So this is what worked for us. The membrane is called a decoupling membrane so that the expansion and contraction of the building does not crack the grout or loosen the, or break off the tile when the building moves. So it, it, it gives it a bit of a membrane to, for the tile to stick onto, which also gives a little bit of flex when the building moves. So that is why we're using this membrane. Um, the downside to it is we're using a ton of thin set to fill in the holes and everything. That is a downside, but we wanted to have everything the same height. So that's what we came up with. And then a lot of people are also mentioning the airflow around the fridge. This cabinet up here only goes to about here. Uh, it's only about that deep. And then there's a huge gap all the way back that goes up to the ceiling. So there is a ton of space for air to flow up there. We've got the fridge is about three inches out from the wall. So it's got tons of room in the back. And we do have the felt furniture pads on the bottom of the fridge that is holding it up a little bit. So it's pretty much the same height almost. <laughs> yeah, it's relatively speaking. I can stick most of my hand back here. So I think we're good for airflow. We're not too worried about it. Jeez. Yeah, you're gonna be like a ginger, so. Right up against the wall. Now you're gonna, we're gonna, you're gonna hug the, uh, oh, no. Hug the, uh, Back it up. We are all done with the tile for the wood stove area. 
we are going to be building a big wood storage cabinet sort of thing and then we're going to have the cats station up above so we can have her food there where the dogs can't get to it she can jump up maybe if it's big enough we can throw her bed up there so she can be close to the wood stove because lately she has been laying right in front of the fire getting all cozy and warm so yeah we'll see how that works out and then over in the kitchen greg is installing the transition between the wood and the tile floor so that's what's going on and he's this to put it in yeah yes we went with a black uh, transition because all of the other ones were silver and I didn't like them. I don't really, I don't love the black. I don't think it looks too bad, but it still stands out a bit more than I would have liked. But there's nothing to match the wood floor and we obviously don't want to have like a, I think white would look weird. This would be fine. Yeah. So we're going to, once we put it in, it's going to look fine. We need a little black, kind of like, you need black in everything just to kind of hold, hold colors mm -hmm. down. And that's my opinion. Yeah, and we do have black fixtures and black handles. There's a bit of black on the stove. The hood keeps, vent is black. Keeps so. congruency around, you know? Yeah, it does match more than the silver wood, I think. That's a big word for a roofer. <laughs> Greg, smart. Smart. <laughs> So I have to very delicately. Delicately. Kitty, this is the best cocking in the world. Did you know that? Yes. I do know. Seek of Flex A1. Or is it one, Flex? Or is it 1A? It's lit kids would say. <laughs> I don't think they say that anymore. Oh. As the adults would say, the young adults. Make it go sploob. That's a good transition. Look at how tight that is. That's awesome. That'll be no thing for the air robo. <laughs> Just put the damn grout in. That was the geekiest shit ever. Oh. Did what? you hear that? Those knees? Oof, man, that's kind of runny stuff. This is going to take a minute.
Well, the grout is dried. It's been 24 hours and it's getting cold in here. We had to let the fire go out so that it was cool enough that we could actually move the wood stove. <laughs> Cat just jumped into a box. <laughs> uh, we had to let the fire go out so that we could move the wood stove. So we gotta get it in place so we can get warm. I gotta say something about today though. That, when did that wood stove go out? The morning. Yeah. It is 18 degrees in here right now. We haven't had a wood stove on all day. We had the sunshine coming in here and it was enough to keep it warm. Yeah. Like a, like above 20. Yeah. With seven degrees outside. So that is super cool. Actually it's super warm, but yeah. now it's not and we need to get this wood stove going. So let's move this thing. Yes. Do you want stone? 